today we're gonna work on helping your dog understand one, how to unwrap themselves when they get stuck behind you, when they cross behind to sniff a sniff on a walk, so that instead of having to do one of these, or one of these, <laughs> you can just uh, stand there and your dog will fix the leash tangle themselves. That's gonna prevent a lot of hazards. The other thing we're gonna do is put it on cue so that when your dog crosses behind and struggles to figure out the problem, you can help them by cueing them to cross behind you to the other side. Step one of this exercise is to make sure that your dog is on leash and to pass that leash behind you. The next step is going to be to grab a treat, to stick it to their nose, see if you can bend your knees, pass them behind you and toss it in the other direction. And you're just gonna repeat that until your dog is easily following the treat behind you. Treat to the nose and toss. Once your dog can easily follow that food lure um, five times in a row, we will start to fade out the lure. And do notice that I am working primarily or entirely on just one direction. I don't wanna confuse her yet by going back and forth both directions. I just wanna get the one direction solid first. And once I have that, then I can train the other side. The other thing I'm not yet doing is clicking. I just want to focus on making sure that I can get that luring motion down really well first. Once I feel like I can, then I can click the moment she passes behind me before tossing that treat. So let's try that a couple times. Good girl. Treat to the nose. Quick toss. The next step of the process would be to fade out the lure from your hand. So only when your dog is easily following a treat from one side to the next, five times in a row, only then are we going to start to fade the treat out of the hand. So I'm still passing the leash behind me. And then, oh big yawn, then I'm going to just pretend to grab a treat to start, still lure behind, toss, and click her for completing that sequence. She's gonna learn over time that that fake toss isn't real, but what I'm doing is I'm teaching her a hand signal. I'm still gonna lure her back into position each time just because I don't wanna ask too much of her and I don't want to train too many things at once. So once she's following the fake lure five times in a row, I'm going to make it more realistic. So I'm going to make sure she knows I have no treats. I'm going to point behind and click her for completing that action. I forgot to pass the leash behind me, but that's okay. So again, leash behind, make a very obvious gesture and click for the completion of the action. So again, once she is following the gesture easily five times in a row, the next step would be to add a verbal cue. So anytime we add a new cue, we always want to say the new cue first, followed by the old cue. The hand gesture is the old cue. So I'm gonna call this right and if she happens to guess that and cross to the other side, I'm just gonna click and treat. If she doesn't, I'm gonna give her three seconds to think, and then I'm gonna follow up with the pre-installed hand gesture. So I'm going to say, Yuka, right? And show her what that means. I forgot to pass the leash again, but it doesn't really matter. So let's try again. Yuka, right? She's thinking now. Yuka, right? Yay, that's awesome. Super cool. So let's see if I can get that a couple times. 
It's very normal to have to go back to a food lure or a hand signal for a little bit, but let's see if I can get that a couple times. Yuka right. Good. Such a smart puppy. So part of why I am incorporating the leash going behind is because of the leash getting tangled like that starts to become a cue as well. When I'm out on my walks with these guys, if she gets tangled behind me like this and I stop walking, she remembers this game and she's much more likely to untangle the leash herself without me having to give a cue at all. You go right. Good. So the process is obviously the same, teaching it going the other direction. But before I do that, I really want to make sure she fully understands this one and is getting the answer right at least 80% of the time. So to proof this, I might practice it in different rooms of the house. I might practice it when my house is bustling a little more, there's more activity or there's interesting sounds happening in the hallway. I may practice it in the garage or in the backyard and then in front of the house um, before deciding that she fully understands the skill. Once I'm seeing the level of consistency I want to see with the one direction, only then am I going to start building the second direction and only then am I going to start expecting that same response on a walk. Once you teach both sides, it should look something like this. All round. You go right. 